And welcome back to You Read John at 120. I'm Jeff Quinn, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Gottfried Leibniz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and this is probably going to be a fairly short video because I don't know all that much about Leibniz. Uh, I have heard of a lot of things that he's done, as I'm going to kind of just describe here. Uh, but unlike Newton and Descartes and Pauli and all these other people I've talked about, I haven't actually read any of his works. Uh, I've known people who've read his works. It's, it's been described as a good author, uh, but I just don't have a very deep knowledge of him. And nevertheless, he's earned a spot in this series. So why would someone who I've barely kind of encountered uh, nevertheless you know, be so important as to take up a full video in this series? And that is, of course, because of his massive fight with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton came up with the idea of calculus and the fundamental theorem of calculus specifically, but Leibniz expressed it in public, and he specifically expressed it in public sooner than Newton did. Uh, Newton would have been you know, capable of solving problems with calculus a decade or more ahead of Leibniz, but uh, Leibniz actually published it. He came up with a notation that was even better than Newton's, uh, and he published it. And so that forced Newton to kind of go into this uh, state where he was kind of proving that he actually did develop the calculus before uh, Leibniz, and it was kind of a century-long public debate between the continent, uh, Europe, and European mathematicians and philosophers, and people in England and Britain, uh, and their kind of mathematicians and philosophers, with both sides viewing things in their own light. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly what happened. I mean, we've got Newton's notes, and now in the 21st century, we're starting to get a, a, a lot clearer picture than we had. But even so, I'm an English speaker, uh, and so to a large extent, we perceive history as written by the victors of a hundred year long public debate between who came up with the idea first, etc. As, as I've kind of described, uh, Newton seems to have been the first to have come up with it by a large margin, but again, Leibniz published, and he forced Newton, the alchemist, to make, or to allow the rest of the world to benefit from the invention of calculus, and to teach the rest of the world how calculus worked, so that other people could understand it, could build the entirety of the industrial revolution on top of it, and to kind of stand on the shoulders of giants, as Newton described. And so, the, you know, our, the, the development of calculus you know, he, he was a, a polymath, uh, he was interested in a lot of areas, including a lot of areas within mathematics. Uh, he offered a challenge to, in 1697 to mathematicians across Europe as kind of a clever way of proving who did and did not actually understand calculus. Uh, so he had the means to solve the problem that he challenged other people to, to solve, and Newton had the same means of solving that problem. Uh, there was no prize, just bragging rights that were kind of granted, but that was enough. Newton was, he took the bait and he went for it. And Newton solved the problem and within a few hours of work, came up with the problem solution, mailed the response or whatever, uh, and Leibniz, of course, uh, had the ability to know at that point that Newton, in fact, had the calculus. Um, now, uh, kind of relating to other videos, Leibniz was an alchemist. Uh, like many of the smart people of his time, uh, he was involved in trying to find the Philosopher's Stone and other such kind of fantastical uh, ideas that our, the alchemy community at the time was interested in. Uh, and I don't know if his writings or his personal writings kind of made the cut as far as surviving in history. That might be something to look into. Uh, but there was definitely an incentive at the time to keep knowledge hidden and to keep people from you know putting you at the risk of being killed for publishing uh, alchemy-related material. And so uh, he, he published things in mathematics, in language. Uh, he was one of the first people to kind of build uh, calculators, physical calculating or computing machines. He didn't build anything as complicated as the analytical engine, of course, uh, but he was certainly one of the people who started the development of computer science as a field on its own. And he laid a lot of the groundwork for how we think about computing and actually realizing uh, mechanical devices that are capable of giving us answers to mathematical problems that would have allowed Turing and Babbage to build on his work. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's made this impact by uh, forcing Newton to uh, 
to release the calculus. He developed these kind of way of looking at computers, uh, and or, or at least calculating type things. Uh, and he reframed a lot of the public issues and a lot of the public debates that were occurring in his lifetime in a way that only a pure or an extremely smart person uh, would have been capable. Uh, so this is Leibniz, the man. Uh, and so you should probably know about him that he existed, uh, that he was critical in our understanding of calculus and getting the word out on it. Uh, and had Newton kept his findings secret, we would probably have remembered him as the inventor of calculus in retrospect. Uh, today he's not nearly as known, especially in the English world, uh, but you know, he, he was there. Uh, he also kind of reformulated our, our view of what vacuum is, uh, and would have tried to kind of conceptualize space uh, in terms of something that was present in between atoms, uh, and would have done some hard thinking on that particular topic. But again, would have led to more modern interpretations of how space works and how vacuum works. Uh, but he made progress on what Descartes would have accomplished in that particular direction as well. So, if there's any questions, again, I don't have a very deep understanding of Leibniz. Uh, he is important to know about. Uh, it may be worth going out and finding it and reading his books. Again, I don't know. I haven't read them myself. Uh, but we are all in his debt or forcing Newton to kind of come out of the alchemy closet, as it were, uh, and actually interact with the world, uh, with calculus specifically, uh, and on other topics more generally. Uh, so, as usual, if you found this little tidbit of information uh, noteworthy, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here. Uh, you can Google Leibniz and get a whole bunch of interesting stories about his life, uh, and from, from fictional accounts to uh, detailed historical analyses, uh, but again, it's just to, to bring this name into your world you may not have heard of before. Hopefully you enjoy. I will see you next video.